So building a practice always has its challenges, but building a holistic practice, especially so. And my guest today is doing it and has done it and is going to give us some practical advice. I'm Carl White, principal at Mark Advisory Group, which is a healthcare marketing agency, and I'm also the host of Practice Care. The mission for both is the same, and that's to help private practice owners stay private. Not only is that what they want, but I really believe that care is better when it's just you and your provider and nobody else is secretly whispering in the provider's ear about what their agenda is. No hospital, no health system, no owners in faraway places. It's just you and your provider, and that's when it's best. And today, my guest is Magic Barkley. Magic Barkley is the lead practitioner at Holistic Natural Health Australia. And when we, as we record this, it is literally midnight there. Thank you, Magic. I'm going to thank you again. And she's also the host of the podcast, A Magical Life, Health, Wealth, and Weight Loss. Magic's life changed when she faced multiple life-threatening conditions. Then she decided to find the root cause of her health issues, and that set her on a path of life-changing learning. Magic helps mainly women, but not only, aged 45 to 65 who feel unheard or misled by mainstream medicine or anyone who wants to bring their health back to basics. By treating root cause and the systems of the body, not chasing symptoms, and reconnecting to the environment and overcoming their past trauma and that of previous generations through healing the PNEI pathways of the body. We're going to ask her about that. She's also a master practitioner in mold toxicity recovery. Personally, she's the mom of two amazing humans and two gorgeous fur babies, grower of organic food for her family and a passion, passionate native gardener. Magic, thank you so much, especially because it's midnight there. I'm going to say that a few times for coming on Practice Care. Thanks for having me, Carl. It's great to be here. Yeah. And good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. It is 15 hours earlier than where Magic is. Um, so your story, you know, I... I meet and know uh, my fair share of, of those who work in the holistic health space, one or another, and they all have what seems to be really um, life-changing stories that set them on the path to where they are now and running the practice that they're running. So your bio gave us a bit, but can you just tell us a bit more about you and how'd you get to this point of Holistic Natural Health Australia? Sure. Well, you know what? In marketing, we call it the hero's journey. And you kind of have to be your own hero. And I found out the hard way. I put all my faith in mainstream medicine at the time and nothing wrong with that. I mean, if I've got a bone sticking out my leg, I kind of want that fixed, you know. Yeah. But I had multiple health conditions. I was stage four cancer, amongst other things. And the treatment I got from mainstream med was not good enough. In fact, I had surgery uh, for my cancer because I didn't know any better at the time. Mm. And that caused other issues that I now have lifelong. So I now have stenosis in my neck from the botched surgery, have hypoxia because of the stenosis. So you know what? When I said to them, hey, my neck saw, my neck saw, you know, did this go right? They kind of just fobbed me off and got rid of me. And they said, well, you, your cancer journey is not over. Now we have to you know, do chemo and radiation. And I looked into it and I said, hang on, you want to almost dissolve my collarbone with radiation. You want to put toxic chemicals in me with the chemo, but you've just done the surgery and screwed up my neck. I don't think so. I think we part ways here now. So, you know, I had to kind of look at what the root cause was behind my own issues. And that's what put, uh, really put me on the holistic natural health pathway and I'm so glad it did because I cured, well, not cured, you can't say that, but I put into remission all the other conditions because I treated the root cause. I didn't cause more imbalances in my body. And you know what? Now my neck still hurts, but I take a natural supplement when it's the absolute worst just to dull the nerve sensation. And then I get on with life. Mm. And, you know, I know I'm not having any more toxic side effects. And I know I'm not being fobbed off or told, you know, my condition's idiopathic or it's all in my mind or, you know, it's all my own fault or like, I'm not dealing with the blame game anymore. It's funny. Uh, you say idiopathic. So for those who don't, don't know what that means, that means um, we don't know what's causing your problem, uh, but you have it. So we're going to call the cause idiopathic because we need to give that a word. And I always chuckle because I'm like idiopathic and idiot. 
have a same root and I just <laughs> You know, like somewhere in there is the root <laughs> is the root cause. One of my yeah. clients just it it steams him whenever he reads idiopathic. He's like, no, that's you just you gave up. So, uh, I yeah, I love that. I love that word. I I see idiopathic on my clients. You know, intakes that they do with me. My intake is seventeen pages, and you know they basically have to tell me everything that's happened, and and they'll say. You know, the doctor said it was idiopathic. And I say, because they think you're an idiot. That's why. So you're 100% right. <laughs> right. And they just changed the last letter to something that sounds more medical or more highfalutin. Um, all right. So one of the things I want to get into is the PNEI system. What is that? Uh, and how did you arrive at, you know, we were talking before we started recording that that's one of the two like main areas of your practice. So how did you arrive at you know, using that system so extensively. Sorry, my heat has just gone back on. <laughs> ah. I can hear it. Um, PNEI system. Okay, so the PNEI system, I basically came to that because I was really looking at the link between, you know, my history, what had happened when I was a child and what was happening now. And I was reading When the Body Says No by Dr. Gabor Mate, and he spoke of the PNEI system and that it was, you know, something new that they were exploring and, you know, it made so much sense in the way he explained it. And I know that no system works alone. So it really, you know, coincided with what I've already learned, what I'm still learning, and certainly with the way my practice is structured. And... You know, when Gabor Mate talks about the PNEI, he says, you cannot discount what happened when you were a child. And that, that makes perfect sense. So what is the PNEI? The P is psycho. So it's your limbic system. It's the center part of your brain where all your emotions are channeled. So we have, you know, the base of the brain, the reptilian brain, senses for danger, keeps you alive, puts you into fight, flight, freeze fade if it needs to but it basically every time you walk into a room scans the room for anything that could fall on you something that might jump out around a corner like and you're not even aware this is happening okay the limbic system makes it mean something so it puts the emotion onto it and the limbic system kind of cuts off all the information before the logical brain has to get hold of it so when you have something happen in your childhood or, you know, you have a thought about your health or even you have a thought about your business, right, your limbic system jumps in here and sends messages straight down to the neural system. This is where, you know, here's an example. You kind of feel really, really bad about something. You know, maybe you haven't met your KPIs for the quarter for your practice all of a sudden you've got this kind of nerve pain thing going on. You don't know where that's coming from. Mm -hmm. That's your neural system reacting to the psycho, to the limbic system. Okay, now if that kind of message goes on long enough, causing the endocrine system. So it imbalances your hormones because it says you are no longer safe, right? The reptilian brain kicked it up to the limbic system. Limbic system took it to the neural system. Neural system says, hey, endocrine system, you know, change up this person's hormones because they're not listening so this is a down the line reaction now all this goes on long enough and the big dog on the block the immune system says well you know the body says this no one's listening the brain tried the nervous system tried the endocrine system tried i'll stop this so you have an immune reaction to something you know you might go down the allergy pathways or you might go down the joint pain pathways, or you might go down the broken skin barrier, brain barrier pathways. And so when all of this stuff happens long enough, the immune system reacts because it has to shut it down to keep you alive. And that's basically how the PNEI works. And Gabor Mate talks about this, you know, at length in his whole book. And that's really what got me when the body says no. Basically, all this stuff's gone on and the body's had to go, no, enough. You haven't listened. You haven't, you know, heeded my warnings. Now I have to say no. 
So, you know, it's yeah. pretty fascinating. I mean, that's just a snapshot of how it works. Right. It's obviously a lot more in depth. But what I was seeing with my clients was I could treat X, Y, Z, and they weren't getting as healthy as I was expecting them to what was going on. So I started by giving them the, you know, ACEs questionnaire, the adverse childhood experience questionnaire, which is 10 questions. And, you know, the people that thought that upset, if you get a score above three, you've got a lot of limbic system involvement from your childhood. I was seeing clients with seven, eight. I myself scored wow. six on it. And I went, wow, you cannot heal what's happening today if you don't heal what happened before. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So let me just say it back to you to make sure that I understand it. So PNEI stands for psycho neuro endocrine and immune. And the, um, the argument is that those are interconnected and they, something can trigger a cascade that could go from the P all the way down to the I, unless something is done to stop it. Um, the difference between that and how things are done over here in the States, and it sounds like Australia as well, is that the PNEI are each carved apart and treated in isolation by different specialists who don't look upstream or downstream um, for, for a root cause up or for lingering effects down. Do I have it right? You have that spot on. And, you know, let's just take the P here. Mm -hmm. Talk therapy is so popular. You know, something happened. I need to go to the psychologist or the psychiatrist. And look, don't get me wrong, they have their place. Mm -hmm. I'm not against, you know, that kind of facilitation. But talk therapy relives a situation. So you're consistently re exposing yourself to the problem, to not, not really the problem, but the trigger. Mm -hmm. So if it was a germ, we'd call it a pathogen. Right. But when we're in talk therapy, what do we call it? It's still a trigger. It's still toxic because you're reliving it and you're still getting that limbic involvement, mm -hmm. right? Which is telling your body, I'm still not safe. I'm still talking about what happened when I was three or what happened when I was married or, you know, 18 or whatever. Like whenever it happened, you're still talking about it. So you're almost re-damaging yourself by talking about it right so what we really have to do is go okay so that happened how do we stop it rolling down the hill right and i kind of describe the pnei like an avalanche you know it starts with you know a little rock might start tumbling down gath gathering snow to cover it and you know that in isolation wouldn't be a huge thing because the little rock might tumble down hit you in the foot and you go ow Mm -hmm. But a rock just tumbled down. But by the time it becomes an avalanche, you're not going to stand there and wait for it to hit you. Right. You're going to be running for your life. Yeah. So by the time it gets to the eye, you know, you've pretty got to pretty much got to run for your life from be it symptoms or new conditions or autoimmunes or you know, whatever it is. Right. So it's it's really interesting. I mean, it really is. And and one of the things if we switch from the more kind of clinical examination of this to the business side of the practice. One of the things that I like is that, you know, the world of holistic, just like I said earlier, same, it sounds like it's similar there as it is here, is that on the one hand, it's, it's hard to argue with anything that you just said. But on the other hand, on the surface, it seems like it could, could apply to anybody, right? And so whenever something seems like it applies to anybody, nobody can ever find themselves in there and they're not sure if it applies to them. If there's an advantage to the Western medicine side, if we, without the debate about how clinically effective it is or not, um, if you're pregnant, you know you need an OBGYN, right? I mean, the I need them, it all takes care of itself and then they call and they seek treatment. But with you, um, what I like is that you're, you're sort of trying to narrow it down. PNEI sounds vast, but at the same time, you're sort of niching within the niche, I guess. And, and that's, I think, a really valuable lesson. Can you just talk a bit more to our listeners about that and about, you know, how, you, how you're making that work and, and is, is what I just said, is it, you know, it just niching down um, makes it easier for people to figure out if they need you or not and if they identify. So you just talk a bit more about that from your experience. Sure. So before I stumbled across PNEI, I was based in immunology. So advanced immunology. So, you know, there's 
five types of immune system that we know of so far. So people would come to me and I go, do you know what? There's got to be an immune involvement here because there is nearly all the time. So that really opened, I guess, a can of worms for me. Okay. It's like, well, why is there immune involvement? Why did what happened when you were three get you to where you are now? Why do you have poly autoimmunity? So multiple autoimmune conditions now, because the history alone, the medical history alone doesn't support it. So I started looking at things like, you know, ACEs and ACEs, so adverse childhood experiences, adverse childhood relationship experiences. I started looking at, you know, what happened when you were in your teens, all that kind of thing. And I just happened to be reading when the body says no. And I went, oh, it makes sense. Still discounted it. Was still coming to work every day going, well, immunology, that's kind of pretty broad. I'm still not yeah. able to help people the way I wanted to. And then I had that light bulb moment. Hang on, I have to niche this. Mm -hmm. Why is immunology the end result? You know, why are they coming to me with autoimmunity? What triggered that first? Right. So all I can say to practitioners, whether they're medical, whether they're holistic, you know, no matter which area you're yeah. in, you really do have to niche down. And as you mentioned, finding a niche within a niche. Well, now I teach PNEI. So I've even, you know, taken that further. And the reason you have to do that is you can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to say I help manly women, 45 to 65, dealing with an autoimmune. It's pretty broad. Yeah. Like if you look at that, that's a big chunk of the population. And I, when I hear that, I go, for all I know right now, magic, I'm dealing with an autoimmune issue and I have no idea, you know? So exactly. Even, even if you stayed at that level, you'd have to describe it further so that people like me could go, Oh, that's me. Oh, yep. So now I say right past. Yeah, exactly. So now I say, you know, I help women, mainly women, 45 to 65 who've experienced some kind of trauma in their past, who maybe have had an illness that they just can't get rid of. And nobody's been able to give them the answers. Maybe they were told it was idiopathic. Hmm. Maybe they were told it was all their fault. Maybe they were told they were making it up. Doesn't matter. There's something there that hasn't been found. Hmm. I'm your health detective and I will help you find it. So I've really had to scale it back and go, I can't help everyone in the world. And I don't want to help everyone in the world. Yeah. You know, it, I have it, very busy home life and right. that's important. Right. And even we'll just pick on PNEI, PNEI because we're talking about it. Even if it, even if it's true that PNEI could literally apply to everybody, um, you're still, first of all, you're still faced with the, the barrier of nobody can find themselves in there. So you're not going to end up helping nearly as many as you could because they're just not going to realize that you can help them. That's the first thing. The second thing is, and, and I'm niched as well, and this is just sort of a, a, a point to make those who are wondering about niches, niches feel narrowing. And it's true that they are. And when you're standing on the surface, looking at a niche, it feels narrow. But if you, I have found, if you take a niche and you dig into it, and you go deeper, 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 eventually this vast underworld opens up that you never would have found. And it turns out it's much bigger than it seemed at first glance. And so far, at least for, for me and for the people that I've talked to this about, it's way bigger than they ever needed. And it's really kind of encouraging because you just got to dig until you find, you know, it's like a hole and then it opens up at the bottom into this massive underworld. And, and I'm wondering, have you found that as well? Yeah, totally. Look, when I started niching down, I thought I'm going to niche down so far that I'm going to have five clients. Exactly. Like I had that moment of panic. Yeah. You say, am I really going to say no to all these other people if they, yes, like, you are. yeah. Why, why am I handballing these guys that are coming to me? to my other practitioners, to other people in my networks? Why am I referring out of my own practice? Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? I'm watching the dollars walk away. Yes. And it's okay to feel that. But if you don't niche, you're not going to be doing what you love. Mm -hmm. right? So I love what I do. I love the hand-selected clients that I take on. Okay. Yeah. I leave my desk at the end of the day and I pat myself on the back and I go, 
I helped eight people today. Yeah. And that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. You know, I didn't try and help 28 people today and mm-hmm. do we say in Australia, a half-assed job, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, we say that here too. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, uh, or I didn't try and talk to 400 people today and say nothing because I had no time. Yeah. I helped eight people today and I'm proud of myself Yeah. and I'm getting paid what I'm worth for those eight people because I niche down yeah. because they know that I'm one of a handful of people paying attention to this. Yeah. And so they can pay me for what I'm worth. Yeah. So there's a big difference. You know, don't panic about the things that you don't have. Yeah. Celebrate the things that you do have yeah. and make it work for your practice. Yeah. And, and let's let's pull that thread a little bit and find a couple of other benefits. So now the eight people that you helped well are eight ambassadors in a way. I mean, at least a few of them are. They're going to tell a friend or a couple of friends and they're going to describe it in a way that makes sense from their point of view to somebody else, which is at least as good at and usually better than how you could do it for you or I could do it for me. That's one benefit. If you, talk, if you, if you half-ass 25 people, none of them are going to say a thing. The best they're going to say is, I'm not sure if it worked, which is, you don't want that. That's one thing. And another thing is, so we're a healthcare marketing agency. I mean, when I Whenever I see people say, what do you do? We are a healthcare marketing agency. We zero in on private practice owners. It's memorable, it's easy, and it's unusual. And all of those things, you know, just make it more memorable. If you're able to do the same thing, then victory, right? Because it's so much clutter out there in both of our industries. And you can try to stand above the clutter by being louder, but still clutter, or you can be different and more descriptive and easy and... I'm finding it's paying off. I, I imagine you're finding it is too, because then the people who walk through the door are better fits to begin with. Always perfect now, but better on average. Totally. And, and you said memorable and, you know, there was a few other words. Well, my words are ethical and sustainable. Yeah. So at the end of the day, do I ethically feel like I could he- help that person heal? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is it sustainable? that They're not relying on me for the answers for the rest of their life. Yeah. Because I've taught them. Yeah. Yes. Now my client needs to walk away. Do I feel that Magic and her team were ethical? Yes. Do I feel that this is sustainable ongoing and I'm never forking out continually out of my pocket? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if those two things are met on both sides, I've done my job. Yeah. So and that's important. It is. It is. And then you can do better. You, you, you do well by doing good, right? And that's part of the part of the good part. Absolutely. Um, so you're, you're, you're building this practice. It's growing. Uh, niche, niching is definitely, niching within a niche is definitely one of the things that's working. I'm wondering if you're willing to share anything that you've tried, um, something that maybe that we haven't talked about that didn't work, just like a good lesson for, for those that you're willing to share to say, look, all I can find is this didn't work for me. Uh, here's why. I think that'd be really valuable if you're willing to share something. There's actually a bit of a story there. So I'm glad you asked. (laughs) So here in Australia, we have a Medicare system where the government picks up the tab for you to see a GP in most cases. So the client will find that it, well, they'll feel that it's free. They get to see the doctor for free. Right. Right. So what I find difficult is finding qualified leads, qualified leads to turn into good clients. Okay, so I spent heaps of money on marketing, heaps of money on courses on how to get qualified leads. Like, you know, I'm one of those suckers with an L on my head. Someone comes along and says, I can help you fill your practice for this many dollars. I go, yes, please, please, yeah. please. So, that's so I've works. done that a million times. Oh, I see that. But like I everywhere. still, like, oh, really? Okay. I know, I know, right? <laughs> I'm not pointing the finger at you. I promise. It's just, uh, okay. It's (laughs) crazy. I know. Wow. Yeah. Guilty, guilty admission there. Okay. (laughs) But I still get what we call tire kickers here in Australia. And they're leads that come, excuse me, they're leads that come to me and, you know, they want help with X, Y, Z. And they've been everywhere and they've gotten no answers. They'll tell me all the things I want to hear, all the buying signals. 
yes, I saw my GP, but I felt like I got no answers. Mm -hmm. I felt like I wasn't heard. And that excites me because I'm like, now you're my person. You're coming into my funnel, coming into my community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll do my free call, my intake call with them, and I'll give them answers. Oh, wow, my doctor's never told me that. Great, another buying signal. Okay, this person is starting to become what -hmm. looks like a qualified lead. Mm -hmm. But they're really not. They're just sucking for free advice, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then I hear, okay, so it's this much to work with you. Wow, I can see my doctor for free. And I'll say, yeah, you can, but you just told me you get no answers. Mm -hmm. You told me they'll keep prescribing things to cover up symptoms and not treat the root cause. And you know that you're going back because you still get no answers and they're still blaming you for what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, but it's for free. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not for free. Yeah. The government's paying for it. You're paying for it in your taxes. Right. And your children are paying for it in their taxes because guess what? We have a national debt. Where do you think it comes from? And, but you're not prepared to pay me for my time and I can give you the answers. Mm -hmm. But you say you want answers. And this can go on for ages till I go, do you know what? You're not my person. Thanks very much. I wish you well. Yeah. So, you know, what have I done? I've kind of been on that treadmill of seeking qualified leads. And my only advice here to all practitioners, be they mainstream healthcare, be they alternative healthcare, holistic healthcare, is without your niche, and it comes back to your niche, without your niche, you don't know your value. And when you know your value, you kind of have to go, do you know what? This person doesn't really sound like a qualified lead. I'll peel a couple of layers off and then I'm done. Right. Don't keep chasing it. It's like hitting your head against a brick wall. There is no point. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I hope I answered to... your question there. Yeah, well, you know, it's um, if they're not a good fit, I'll just say it bluntly, <laughs> you know, get rid of them as fast as possible if you know. And you're saving everybody time you know, you and them. So yes, that's, that's the one that never goes away, right? You think you got it and some new, new person shows up and finds a loophole. You didn't think it would just make it better over time, I guess. Right. I mean, you just keep getting better at it. Excellent. In marketing and in healthcare, no matter what, you still got to keep learning. Yeah. But as long as you do learn Mm -hmm. and you don't keep repeating the same thing I said earlier, you know, I've spent all this money on all these courses to get qualified leads. Yeah. Well, Okay, I did it twice, mm-hmm. right? The first time I didn't learn my lesson. Second time I did, I have two adult children that live with me. They looked at our bank account and they went, what was this $1,500 here, mum? And I'm like, oh, I did another course about leads. You, you did one before and it didn't work. Yeah. I went, yep, that's right. And so they caught me out on it and they went, can you stop doing that? (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Magic, thank you so much. The the clinical lessons, the business lessons, super valuable. Just a couple of questions before we wrap up. First one is, now that you've heard our discussion, is there anything you think that I should have asked you that you think would be valuable to those listening, but I just didn't ask you about? Yeah, look... (laughs) Not that you didn't ask me, probably I didn't volunteer it. So I will now. Okay. And that is, I had to learn to outsource things. I do what I do really well because I love what I do, Mm -hmm. but I hate spending quality, viable practice hours trying to make a Facebook post or an Instagram post or write a blog or something. Mm -hmm. So I've outsourced that. And I can say that has been the biggest pleasure to me is when I look at my Facebook pages and, you know, or I get an email from my own MailChimp account Mm -hmm. going, here's the latest blog. And I'm like, wow, that's good. And I didn't have to do it. (laughs) Yay. Yeah. (laughs) So I have a marketing person that I have a discussion with once a fortnight. Mm -hmm. We spend an hour to an hour and a half on Zoom. She has like a thousand questions written down rapid fires them to me Mm -hmm. she records the whole thing and then she turns it into blogs and posts and all this crazy fantastic stuff and you know Mm -hmm. as I'm reading it I'll go sounds like I said that 
Oh, that's yeah. right. We had that Zoom call. Cool. Yeah. Done. Yeah. So definitely outsource things. The other thing that I love is that because I've freed up time, I've been able to start my own podcast that's been going now for ooh, two years now. Wow. And Congrats. I've just reached 4,000. 500 downloads so I'm pretty happy with that yeah. and uh, you know so I get to impart information so I'm still talking to the people who aren't my qualified leads but they're still interested in the little swimming pool that I've got going on of PNEI here mm -hmm. they want to just dip their toe in I'm still talking to those people mm -hmm. so you know there's different things that you can do different arms of your business that are not as time consuming as maybe being in clinic that are still going to make you feel good about what you do, right. but still keep reaching out to those people. Right. Excellent. 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 And then the final question is for those who are listening, who, who, uh, you know, they're, they're inspired by this a bit and, and they want to get started on what we've been talking about. What are one or two steps that you would advise them to do like the moment they're done listening to this to get started? Jump on my website. That's the first thing. Yeah. Holisticnaturalhealth.com.au. Holistic with a W because I treat with holism. There, send me a message. So I actually teach PNEI. Ah. And amongst other things, I can hook you up with anything from menopause certification to, you know, perimenopause to mold toxicity to advanced immune. There's a number of different niches I can hook you up to. You can get, you know, further education and really help you niche down in a way that less than 100 people worldwide at the moment are doing. Okay, so I can put you in touch with that with a pretty good discount on further education. So definitely send me a message. There's one thing. Okay. You know what? If you think you've been dealing with PNEI, or mold toxicity, which we haven't even touched on here, mm -hmm. send me a message. If yeah. you want me to help you redesign your intake or client screenings, send me a message. I'm available for all of that kind of stuff because that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 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 Well, thank you, Magic. Thank you once again at this crazy late hour or early hour, however you want to look at it for coming on Practice Care, really appreciate it. Uh, and in addition to uh, Magic's website that she uh, said, we're gonna put uh, your contact information in the show notes, you gave us your, your social properties, we'll put them in there. And then a couple of other points just before we wrap up. First, if you're like Magic and you've got an experience with the business side of your practice that you think others would benefit hearing about, we really want you to come on Practice Care, share your experience for other private practice owners so that they can stay private just like you are. In the show notes for this episode and all episodes, there's a link. It's just to, to tell us what's on your mind so that we can get you scheduled as soon as possible. And then finally, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Practice Care. And we'd really appreciate a review uh, on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks very much. And until next time.